tucked away amidst the Gothic architecture of this great institution, it stands alone, Cameron. And once a year, the Stadium of Stone shares time and space with this, a nylon-tented city, a teeming suburb housing all who have heard enough of the history and now want to be part of it. To rant and rave and run with all the story ghosts who have played before and of whose deeds have made this game and its moments timeless. Two powerful programs separated by eight miles and two shades of blue, one like the sky, one royal. They will renew their heated rivalry, adding to the lore and legend of this, the greatest matchup in all of college basketball. Stadium, it's the renewal of college basketball's greatest rivalry, number 19, North Carolina, against number 12, Duke. The Tar Heels are 12 and 5, one game under 500 in the ACC, while the Blue Devils are 4 and 3 in the conference, 15 and 5 overall. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Dick Vitale. It is great to have you with us. North Carolina is coming off of a huge win against Clemson, and Dick, they did it by shutting down the outside game. Well, they're going to have to do that again today, Mike. Their perimeter defense is going to have to excel because Duke, if they have one strong suit, they're shooting the three. With guys like Capewell and Langdon, they can knock down the trifecta. Carter's going to have to step it up defensively like he did against McIntyre in shutting down the Clemson perimeter game. North Carolina is a very big team, something Duke does not have, and something that's hurt them all year. Well, it's going to even be compounded a little bit more tonight because Greg Newman has not performed the practice like Coach K has wanted, and he's going to the bench to start this game. They will need a great performance out of Newton in this game coming off the bench because the bottom line is they'll need his size to neutralize the big fellas for North Carolina. All right, Dick, it is always special. Let's take a look at the U.S. Army starting lineups. For the heels, Shaman Williams has regained his shooting touch. The last four games, he is hitting 50% from the floor, is averaging over 17 points a game. For Duke, Rashawn McLeod has the hot hand over 14 points, more than seven rebounds a game in his last three starts. The transfer from St. John's has had a major impact. There is nothing quite like Cameron Indoor Stadium. If you have never had the pleasure, you should find a way, I was going to say buy a ticket, find a way to steal a ticket and get in here. Well, just tell me they know Mike Patrick and they can get a freebie. Oh, yeah. That didn't even work for me. Pull up Coach K. I mean, really, if you're a basketball lover, you got to experience the excitement that is generated in this building. Antoine Jamison, the leading scorer in the ACC, getting it cranked up. What's unusual about this is that North Carolina has a seven-game win streak. Here are the longest streaks in the rivalry. You have to go back to when the ball had feathers in it back in the 20s to find the longest one. After that, the longest is eight. North Carolina trying to match that tonight. Duke trying to snap that seven-game win streak. I think it's hard to believe that you and I have been here for many, and many a magical moment. And I really, I thought it was like 4-3, Mike. I can't believe they won seven in a row. Neither can the people at Duke. This is Ed Cota, the freshman point guard out of Brooklyn, New York. He'll be challenged today by Wojciechowski. That pass is tipped by McLeod, stolen by the Blue Devils. Capel with a rare start. He's been doing so well coming off the bench. At 25 against North Carolina State. Trajan Langdon kicks it back out. McLeod with a hanger. Got it. He's really been on fire. Played well against Maryland. Full guard trap. Trying to get the crowd into the game. This is their advantage, the speed they have against North Carolina. A reach in by Oak Elijah. North Carolina with the ball in. Wojo knocks it away on the other end. Wojciechowski leads the ACC in steals. I'll tell you, he anticipates really well. It's important for Duke to get an early lead to get this crowd really rocking. Capel for three. That's exactly the start that Mike Krzyzewski really wanted. Jeff Capel coming out of his shooting slump after he struggled early in the year. Another steal.
The fourth turnover for North Carolina. They do a great job with their pressure rotating back in terms of the flexions. We're going to watch Cable now squaring his body, getting a good look. He's playing with confidence now. He's really starting to believe he's important. Remember earlier this year, Mike, they were pulling him here. He had a tough beginning of the season. That was so unfair, and then booing him. Okalaja dribbles it off his knee out of bounds. Five turnovers for North Carolina in a minute 29. They can ill afford to play this way against Duke. Not getting any execution at all in their offensive set. Langdon, who has just been brilliant after missing last year with a stress reaction in his knee. So is Wojciechowski. That one tips and will go out of bounds. And now they're saying it's out of bounds to North Carolina. Wojciechowski's been their MVP. He really has played brilliantly. Well, somebody must have had a bad angle on that because I saw a tip. Here comes Cota. North Carolina has yet to take a shot. They turned it over five times. They got to go to Swicker inside. They got a big size misman inside. Take advantage of the 7 3 with a touch. Let him get some touches. Well, they got to go to somebody. You can't score if you don't shoot. Swicker short. Here's the follow and a foul inside as Okalija had an offensive rebound. Mike, that's what they really do well. They get up on the offensive glass and really attack the glass. First, first on the team, number 15 for the Cardinals. You see Florida State it's with a four-point lead over Maryland, 37, 37 seconds five. left. Shows you the toughness of this conference, Mike. Every day you lace them up, you have to come to play. And the win over North Carolina was a big one for FSU. That may have gotten them rolling. And they lost that heartbreaker to Wake Forest. Lost by three down there. Oak Elijah at the free throw line. Only a 51% free throw shooter. He's part of the three Musketeers, Carter, Jameson, and Okalaja, three Souths. They really love each other, really associate well with one another. North Honorable. Carolina on the board after 2.09. It's 5-1. A smart play right here by Dean Smith. Now going to some full court pressure. Trying to attack Duke. Vince Carter on Langdon. That's a tough matchup for Carter to stay with the quicker Trajan Langdon. Takes over quick enough to take away his driving angle. He's part of that diaper dandy class with Chappelle. Played at the same high school as Lauren Woods, now starting for Wake Forest. It must have been a frightening team, oh, you think? Wow. So Eight go one Duke. Jahidi White of Georgetown was also on that team earlier. Carter in and out on the three. Swicker with a follow and got it. That's Third the advantage Swicker. they have tonight. That's why Newton's going to have to play off that bench and give him some productivity. I think he's getting a message right now sitting on the pine. Real tough matchup problems for Duke inside against the 7-3 Zwicker. North Carolina's rotating into the zone, which should play in the hands of Duke, who likes to get into gaps. Capel, nice idea, but whistled the bounce pass behind, in front of Trajan Langdon where he couldn't reach. Hey, it. there's the new do. Take a look at the new do right there. Wow. Digger want to get one of those dudes. I don't think so. <laughs> Look at that pressure that Wojciechowski plays on the basketball. Wide open, Carter for three, and Vince Carter drains it to make it an 8-6 game. You know, when they went into that little slump, like, they were losing those games in the middle of the season, Carter was out with an injury, had a hip injury, and he's a very important player in their rotation. Here's Langdon with a right hand and scores from six feet out. Well, the former Diamond star out in... Alaska was a heck of a baseball player, signed a professional contract. Mike Krzyzewski loves him on the hard court. Greg Newton will check in at the first opportunity. Mike Krzyzewski not pleased with his play against Maryland, not pleased with his practice the other day. Here's the three-pointer for Shaman Williams. He's been on fire lately. Well, he had his career high in a big win here last year, scored 26. Is that 2-3 zone. you got to go to the wings. We're overloading. There's the overload. Open for three, Langdon, but there is the follow by Carol 
Crowell. He has five. Shouldn't get second shots with the small lineup that's on the floor. Carowell only 6'6", 210, very quick. He's had some good moments, but like freshman, he's been a little up and down. McLeod trying to guard Zwicker. Yeah, they're going to go inside the Zwicker, and he's going to be a little more active and want the ball. There they screen for him. Shot clock is at 10. Shimon Williams outside against Wojo. They're setting the high screen and roll to Swicker. There it is. Got a 16-foot shot. That's not where they want him to have the basketball. And a push-off will be called against Carrollwell. Good foul number 23. Chris Carrollwell is first. We're going to take a look right now. The Dukies attacking the glass. There's the jumper. Carrollwell with a little slam. A frantic finish in Tallahassee where Maryland is trying to tie Wake Forest for the ACC lead. Gary Williams teed up by Dick Paparo and ejected. The Seminoles did not cash in on the free throws, but they lead by three in the closing seconds. We'll keep you posted. Back to Mike and Dick. 17 seconds to go in that one. A three point lead here for Duke. That would be big in the standings because Maryland has a share of first place in the loss column of Clemson. And I'll tell you, it doesn't get any easier for Maryland. They got a date with Wake Forest at home on Saturday. I can't wait to get down here for that game on ABC. That's a little revenge. Our only loss, Wake Forest, was on a trifecta at the buzzer by Pluff. Maryland would be 6 and 2. Clemson or would be also with two losses and Wake with one. They're all going to get a few more losses, Mike. You can guarantee oh. that. Take that to the bank. They're just beating each other up during the conference season. Nice movement right there by North Carolina. Had some good execution. Played so brilliantly against Clemson defensively. Held them to 48 points. Jamison outside against McLeod trying to penetrate. Another loose ball. Langdon pull up three. Got it. Once he gets to that line, squares the shoulder to the rim. You can count on it. Trajan Langdon, number one in the ACC, number seven in the country in three-point field yeah, goal percentage. Yeah. And he's automatic on a free throw line. Jamison's got to get the basketball. A seven for eight against Clemson. Jamison in the lane, a little hanger, won't go. Good rebound by Rashawn McLeod. McLeod's really been a solid player. He can hit the three as well. Doesn't that time in the rebound to Jameson. They really would rather have him work on the interior a little bit more. There's Wicker in the lane over Newton. I love Sorry, that little hook shot inside. George Mikan style. A little before your time, Mr. P. Sert Swicker with four. The lead is four. That was the Digger's time in era down there at the ball. The bigger was coach of the Irish against George Mike. He'll love you for that. Only kidding you, Digger. <laughs> Langdon to Wojciechowski, who is now much a better shot outside. That's Capel takes a three. And this is a push off inside. It will go against North Carolina. I believe it's Carter. Fouls on number 15. That's Carter for Carolina. Take it's a look at first. First. Look at Trajan Langdon. There he is, concentrating, worked on his shot for 14 months. Has always been able to stroke it. That's never been a problem. Had the leg injury last year. Leitner. Only Christian Leitner has a better career three-point field goal percentage. And what a job he's doing in the pros. Congratulations. Made the all-star team. Christian Leitner's found a home in Atlanta. Carmen Wallace, number 34 in the Dukes lineup. Here's Wojciechowski for three. And if he can hit the outside shot, he makes them so much better. Hey, Mike, the bottom line is if you sit in that zone and give them the wing jump shots, they're going to really hurt you. They're trying to overload on one side, and Wojo wide open on the wing. And they've got Langdon and Capel, who can stroke it from out there as well. One of the best three-point shooting team in the ACC. Averaging eight made threes a game. Here's Carter with a 16-foot off it's balance Carter. job. Nice shot. Carter has five. Great curl move. They did an excellent job with a curl move for Carter. He almost came to Duke. Mr. the basketball in Florida. Ricky Price in for the first time. Reach around foul. That will go on Carter, his second. 
From Big Bear Mountain, Snow Summit, California, the Winter X Games coming to ESPN and ESPN2. World-class athletes competing in five events like snowboarding, snow mountain biking, ice climbing, and more. Catch the action starting tomorrow on ESPN and ESPN2. Sounds like that's going to be a lot of fun. Ice climbing. Wow. How do you practice? I guess with ice. <laughs> Hey, Duke likes to utilize dribble penetration. That's been a trade. See, there it is. Trying to penetrate the gap. Trying to attack the seam. Mike Chappelle, number 20, comes in for Mike Krzyzewski. Very deep this year. Running jumper by Price won't go. They would love to see Ricky Price snap out of it. He has shot very poorly so far this year. I tell you, I watched Ricky Price play. I was talking to Mike about that today. He has that star potential. But he, nice play. Swicker all alone. Surge nice Swicker. speed lays it in. Serge Swicker has six. Lack of communication on the floor. They go to diagonal, get the open shot. You're right, Mike. Quickly Price has got to turn it up a notch and give him the kind of performance he's capable of. Mike Chappelle, that's a three. Well, that's Chappelle and Carowell. Two good looking freshmen up and down, but Chappelle can knock down the open three from out of Michigan. They've got another great looking freshman on this team, and that's Nate James. We haven't seen him yet. Duke hitting 50% of its threes early. And what a freshman class coming in next year. Shane Battier from out of Michigan, a tremendous talent. They are going to be loaded. Shaman Williams with a miss. Rebound to Chappelle. Wojo head up all the time. Chappelle down the lane, collision, charge. Well, see, a little bit out of control. He stepped into the gap. He should have pulled up. He had a 12-footer. There was a gap that you could have put a Mack truck through. 11.43 to go first half. The Blue Devils behind some strong outside shooting with a six-point lead. Duke 21 to 15 over North Carolina here in Durham. And Dick, when they move the ball the way they have, they get great outside shots. Mike, take a look right here. They're going to try to overload, put three guys here. See, once he goes here, they have two guys to defend three. But he's going to get the open shot in the gap area right here, Woja House. Watch right now as they reverse to swing the ball. See the gap right there. He's got the gap. He attacks the gap, knocks it down, and makes it count. Left side, they had an overload three against two. Duke has four three-pointers by four different players so far. You know, Mike was telling me before in the locker room, he said the problem with our club is people aren't stepping up, so I have clear-cut substitutions. The bottom line is every game it's a different player, and that creates problems. That one wingman position, they've started five different players throughout the season. Here's Maktar Jai. Nice bounce pass inside to Jameson. Nice look by Maktar. Good bounce pass. Jameson inside is automatic if he gets the ball in that deep. Dean Smith came out of the man-to-man, -man, made the adjustment. That's why he's in the Hall of Fame. Goes to the man-to-man, -man, comes out of the zone. Carmen Wallace lost it on the way up. Jump ball situation. Nice call as Maktar Jai was playing good defense. Florida State has beaten number five, Maryland, 74-70. So Wake Forest, once again, all alone at the top of the ACC. That's not a shock, Mike. You and I watched that club play, and we were so impressed with their athletic ability down there at Seminole Land. We saw them beat North Carolina, Collins. We talked about people like Corey Lewis, Randall Jackson. Big win. Got some talent down there. Big win for Pat Kennedy. Langdon working outside with Chappelle. They'll change the look of their zone now. Price for three. Ricky Price only hitting 27% from three-point range. And missing his first two shots psychologically really has to make him think twice. Doesn't look very comfortable with it. He's not playing with that silky smooth transition ability that we saw last year. Jamison goes nice baseline. Look. Good help defense. Then Coda gets it and will draw the foul inside. Antoine Jameson uh, showing that he can pass the rock as well. McLeod picks up the personal. That's his first and the fourth team foul. Yeah, it's a pressure game right now for Duke. I mean, you've lost seven in a row to North Carolina. He said, well, this is a new year. But if you lose here, you got another trip on March 2nd to go down to Chapel Hill. And, I mean, you're staring at potentially nine in a row for this club. Inbounds to Jameson. Number 14, Nate James is in for Duke. This guy is going to be a star. He's got a great body, super strong, had a thumb injury. 
Jamon Williams, nice baseline drive, and it's blocked by McLeod. McLeod with that good defensive rotation. Got to make that. James, and he walked. Mike Krzyzewski said something very interesting a week ago. He said the first game back after that injury, it was all instinct, and he played brilliantly. Then he started to get some reps in practice, was starting to think about everything, and it's really slowed his progress. Yeah, he got a little tentative. He's not doing what he does naturally. Just play the game and react. But he's got that look in his eye. He's a kid who wants to be out there. Left-hand scoop shot by Coda. Coda down the lane, an excellent driver. They tease him. They call him the old man. He's 21 years old. He's a diaper dandy. But he's going to be a good one at North Carolina. The lead cut to two. Finally controlled by Shimon Williams. Williams is a kid that's really made himself an outstanding little guard. And Coda ties it at 21. He's a good transition player. He's got to work a little bit on developing a better range as a shooter. James kicks it back out, and James fouled in the process. There's been so many magical moments in this building. I'll never forget the game two years ago, 102 to 100. Here goes Coda now. Look at him now. A little shake and bake. Nobody picks him up. Has the little seven-footer, knocks it down. Played at St. Thomas Moore Prep School in Connecticut. Non-shooting foul called on Jameson. We're back in the zone again. Well, opposite. McLeod swatted away by Swicker. Then stolen by Langdon. Deals it off, and he's fouled before the shot. Good call by Larry Rose. He definitely got fouled prior to the release of the basketball. I'll tell you, Leon Cota, his first, team's fifth. This is the pinnacle of rivalries. You can talk about all the other rivalries, Mike, but when you talk North Carolina and you talk about Duke, you're talking something special with the Michelangelo Dean Smith eight miles away. You were so eloquent in that opening, my friend. You did a brilliant job. Congratulations to Fred Kiger for the brilliant writing. I mean, you delivered it to me. I'm trying to get you an ESPY award. Thank right? you. Thank you. Wojciechowski back the other way. Gives it up to Capel. Langdon also in there as Mike Krzyzewski back to his three-guard offense. I have a lot of respect for Capel. Capel lost the starting job at the top himself. James with a miss. Langdon kept it alive. McLeod with a rebound. And then taken away by Coda. Well, he put the ball to the deck and spun and had no vision of the defensive player. Duke getting a little sloppy with it. Go to Swicker inside. Get the big guy some touches. He's got it knocked away by McLeod. He can't save it. He's got to reduce the passing lane by stepping to the basketball. McLeod is using his quickness against Swicker, and so far, it's been effective. There's a look at Newton sitting on the sideline. A black eye courtesy of the Maryland game. Well, you know, he pierces his navel, he pierces his nose, pierces his eyebrows. I mean, that's a Dennis Rodman clone, man. Dennis Rodman and Newton, what a combo, baby. No comment. <laughs> Don't get me going on Rodman. Don't get me started on that deal either. I said it once, said it twice. I salute the commissioner for what he did for 11 games. What a counselor. I thought he should have went one step further for the entire year. We need role models. We need the Grant Hills, baby. We need the David Robinsons. Salute the Michael Jordans. Amen. 8.24 to go first half. Shimon Williams working on Wojciechowski. Kicks it outside. A three from Okalaja. Okalaja is a solid player. I call him the intangible man. He does all the little things. Scraps, hustles, plays defense. And Dean Smith loves the way he plays defense. Wojciechowski with an errant pass into the corner and out of bounds. And returns to the lineup for the Blue Devils. Seven turnovers for Duke. I tell you, North Carolina to me got their season back in a positive note when they had that comeback from being down nine to North Carolina State. Had they lost that game, Mike, I think they were heading for a disaster this year, but they showed a lot of character in that game. Shimon Williams with a miss. I'll tell you where it started, Dick. I believe it was the game earlier when they came back against Virginia, even though they lost. I think it showed them they could come from behind. Well, they were down nine with two minutes and 35 and won that game, and that was a big positive move for them. McLeod trying to work on Jamison. Big guy cuts him off. Langdon, that one's tipped out of bounds by Elijah. 
What Duke lacks, they don't have one star. They don't have a player that is their really superstar who they can go to. They got a lot of good players, but they lack that one great, great player. I'll tell you, you take a look at right now, Mr. Okalaja says, I'm from Germany, baby, and I can stroke the J. You don't get this type of experience. And you have to. I would advise anybody to, to try it. You know, to be in the ACC, to actually get the opportunity to play in that type of rivalry is great. Once Duke and Carolina match up on the floor, you can throw everything out. You know, the past teams. You know, the, the, this season's records. You know, it doesn't matter. It's just competitive and intense and emotional. If you can't have fun in this type of situation, you shouldn't even be playing college basketball. And it's going to be a really good atmosphere. And there is something particularly special about the atmosphere here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. I really believe for Duke to win this game, Newton's going to have to be a factor on the inside. Trajan Langman had to force that one up. It's tipped back outside and saved by Wojciechowski. And then running into Capel, he stepped on the midcourt line, and it's a backcourt violation. And once the foot or the ball goes to that backcourt line, as we look here at the game summary, North Carolina shooting very, very well after turning it over the first five times they had it. They really settled down, made some adjustments. Dean Smith really coaching like you can't believe. You go to practice and you watch him. That man is teaching. Anybody that doesn't think that he's on top of the game doesn't know what they're talking about. Believe me, just I watch a North Carolina practice. Wojciechowski picks up a personal. Look at Wojo right now. Here comes defensive pressure. He's a member of my old Rambo team. Look at him. He wants to scrap and claw. Look at him right now. He's going after him. He's going to bump and grind. Little Wojciechowski. Trying to get it to Zwicker. Newton got a hand on it and taken away by Wojo. What Zwicker's doing wrong, Mike, he's not stepping to the basketball. He's waiting for the ball to come to him. Duke has missed its last seven shots and given up the lead. Here is Newton over Zwicker. Doesn't get the roll. Carter lost it. Then Newton got a hand on it. Out of bounds to, to North Carolina. I'll tell you one thing, Greg Newton is playing hard. Nobody can question his effort right now. He is playing really hard. I love that new dude, baby. I love all those ball guys. We gotta unite. Six twenty-nine and counting first half. Jameson outside, guarded by McLeod. Here's Capo with a steal. Good move by Capo. There's the jam. Jeff Capo. He's got a brother, Jason, that's outstanding. Junior. Oh, the wackos out here in Cameron Crazy here going bananas. One point game. Capel's really been a positive player in the last two weeks of the season here. Got to make that open shot. Swicker rimmed out on it. And that's what they want. The cloud up on the glass. They want a little bit more rebounding out of it. Trajan Langdon, quick first step, dumps it to McLeod. Now he's trapped inside, and Zwicker flat-footed gets the block. Jamison is going to pick up a useless foul. That's two on Jamison. He didn't need to do anything with Zwicker there. Cable steps right into passing lane, deflects it, has the eye contact on the ball, looks back, and then takes it up with a little jam. His dad, the coach at Old Dominion. I really respect that kid. I'm telling you, Mike, the crowd booed him here, and I thought it was so unfair. You give your heart out to your university. As a freshman, he played such a key role in him going to the final game of the NCAA tournament, and they lost to Arkansas and Nola Richardson's club. But he didn't pout and suck. He just picked up the pieces. Mike was so complimentary today talking to him about Capel. McLeod with a career high 22 points, 11 boards against Maryland in the losing pause the other day. It's hard to believe he didn't get a lot of playing time at St. John's. It wasn't Isn't that it? much of a factor. Especially when you look at the makeup of their team. They've been a little disappointing to me. I thought they were going to be better this year, St. John's. Tied at 24 with 5.45 to go, first half. Well, that league as a whole is suffering a little bit this year. Well, they had seven players drafted in the first round last year when you talk to Big East. And it runs in cycles. They'll be back. Sure. Yeah. Newton and Swicker really working on each other inside. Yeah, Newton trying to keep the ball away from Swicker. Beat him good post defense. Trying to deny him the basketball. Three-quarter up. Shot clock down to seven. Fed inside, knocked out of bounds, shot clock at six, it won't recycle. The 
scoring trends have really been unbelievable. They've been such low scoring games. Carter puts up a three with a clock running down and drains it. I think he can be a BTP or a prime time player. He's just got to utilize his athletic ability a little bit more by getting at the transition and getting some easy buckets. Coming into this game, he hit 16 of his last 27 shots, so he's been on fire. He was a drum major in high school, Vincent Carter. Three pointer for Langdon. If he's left alone, it's in. They live off the three. The trifecta is so important for the Duke offensive system. Right now, with Curtis Staples and Trajan Langdon, you have two of the best three point shooters I've ever seen playing in the ACC. Well, Staples had 27 the other night for Virginia against NC State. Another heartbreaking loss for Herb Sendick. 11th turnover for Carolina. Shaman Williams lost his footing and went down. Here's the three point story. Carolina not too bad, 80%. Duke has hit one more, but they've had eight more tries at it. I mean, North Carolina would be sitting where they are if they didn't allow that game to get away from them that you and I did when they were up 22 on Maryland, one of the great comebacks ever in the ACC. But I don't know that that game created any weaknesses. It just exposed them. I like that, Mike. Good analysis. Well, thank you, partner. <laughs> nice screen. Capel nearly lost it on the way up. Oh, that's and that's idea. a travel on Carolina. I tell you, there's excitement galore down at the Duke campus thinking about the future, though. Chris Burgess is the real deal from out of California. Tommy Amica and Quinn Snyder played a great role in helping Mike Krzyzewski recruit that class. And the one they love, Elton Brand, the guru, Howard Garfinkel, told me today, who's here, said that Brand may be the best out of the group. He's still New York. Here's Coda. Puts the shot up, won't go. Coda gets the follow and scores. He has had come out with an offensive mindset tonight. And Ed Coda, who only averages 6.9 points a game, already has six. Now they go back into that zone. See, here's where I think they can be exposed, North Carolina. They're overloading on the left side. See, right now nobody's playing it. He's wide open if he stared at the basket. Watch the baseline will be wide open, right? If they reverse the basketball. Penetration, nice jump off the Duke, he missed the shot point blank. Got to convert that on the inside. He was two for ten against the Terps of Maryland. 321 to go, first half. North Carolina with a nice comeback as a two point lead. The last of the unbeatens, number one Kansas is getting a battle, and Texas Tech has won ahead of Collect, takes us to Lubbock for. A look at the Red Raiders in control early. Corey Carr kind of fumbles the ball. Then on the break here, lays it in high off the glass. The Red Raiders lead by nine. Mike, Dick? I tell you, I'm not shocked by that. I was telling people down inside, that's the one danger stop right now for Kansas. The kid for T is one of the best underclassmen in America. Six foot 11, getting better and better. And Corey Carr gives James Dickey a dynamite duo at Texas Tech. Duke came out very strong defensively and shooting. They made seven of their first 12, but they missed nine of their last 12. This crowd roared when they gave the Florida State score. I think Pat Kennedy roared even more because yeah. this year is big. He's got to get in the tournament. I mean, there's some talk down here. His job could be in jeopardy. David Hart did roll over that contract in a five-year rollover. Timeout. Faced with a five-second inbounds violation. They used a 20-second timeout. Of course, we'll be back next Wednesday with another doubleheader starting with the Big East. Pitt against Miami, the team that's for real. 7 o'clock Eastern for Pacific, followed by number 12 Duke against second-ranked Wake Forest pending the Kansas outcome tonight. That's a 9 p.m. Eastern start. And I promise Mike Krzyzewski, I will not say that they lost nine in a row to Wake Forest. I promise that. As we look here at the ACC in the top 25, I mean, Davey Odom, you talk about an underrated coach in America, won two consecutive ACC titles. Capel, nice move, nice shot. We're tied at 29. Again, attacking the gap of the zone. Capel with 70. Dribble penetration. Or seven, excuse me. 70, yeah, I heard that. Slicker, get it inside to him. Jump hook, it looked like that ball slipped out of his hands. Oh, it's awfully warm down here, Mike. It's really, really hot. I had my annual journey as they passed me up in the stands, and I'm going to tell you something, it was hot. 
Tried to get you to come up there, but you, you escaped. Oh, they wouldn't send me back down. It's a 20-second timeout, I believe, on the out-of-bounds. Did they now. give him the time? Look at Swicker posting the ball. See, I think that slipped right out of his hand. You're 100% right, Mike. Well, you'd hope it slipped. Well, we'll give him the break anyway. He deserves it. And they did give Capel, or they did give McLeod the timeout as he was falling out of bounds. So it will be Duke basketball with 2.55 to go in a half. Wojciechowski running the club 3.18 to 1 assist to turnover ratio. That is unconscious. And I'll tell you, such an intense, intense competitor. McLeod rattled it around, but it went down for him. 31 29 Blue Devil. Well, he came from a great high school program, St. Anthony's, would have produced so many great players, including one of the greatest ever to play at Duke, Bob Hurley Jr. Williams kicks it out. Zwicker, baseline jumper, tied at 31. There's another example of dribble penetration and getting the ball over to Zwicker. But you credit that with the penetration of Shaman Williams, who has really approved his ball handling skill. Coda on Wojciechowski. He really has, Dick. Last year, he was a disaster when he had to dribble the basketball. Wide open, McLeod. He misses. And Okalaja knocked down by Wojciechowski. That will be Wojo's second person. Good foul on Steve Wojciechowski, number 12, on his second personal foul, six on the These Wicker's going to step out. He likes to flare out. He flares Tries out, so he gets that good Tries little look. Tries he drifts on a baseline. He gets that little jumper. Take a look at Surge. He's surging. Look at this here. I think those numbers even could be higher. He had 22 points and 20 rebounds. That's unheard of. When that flash in the paper, I read USA Today, and I saw it. I couldn't believe it against Southern Cal. 22 and 20. Nobody had had a 20 double double since Cup Check. Rebounder Ricky Price. Duke with a chance to regain the lead. 139 to go in the half. See, Capel's always looking to get into a gap. Good hustle right there. Price hesitated, and the ball was knocked out of bounds by Shimon Williams, who was going for the breakaway. Shimon wanted to hold. He's recruited by Kentucky. Not a lot of big people were after Shimon Williams. Patino wanted him. He's at Fork Union, played with Merle Cole. Thirty-one all. Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale. Glad to have you with us. And on the give and go, somebody went, and the ball went out of bounds. Yeah, you don't want to pick up your dribble. He picked up his dribble in that sequence. Ten turnovers against the Blue Devils. The intensity of Mike Krzyzewski, Mike with K. I said, Mike is back. He's got that fire in his eyes. Price against Coda. Here's a reach around and a steal by McLeod. Good anticipation, good defensive pressure. We learned a lot of that playing for Bob Hurley at St. Anthony. inside the line. That's a two-point shot and a two-point lead. And I'm really happy to see him become a positive player. You hate to see a kid who gives so much be down. Capel has nine. His shot is back. His confidence is back. Williams trying to get nice by line and dumps it. Dolk Elijah missed the shot. Great play by Shavon Williams, but they don't finalize. Capel wide open. Smart decision. He wants to work the clock down. Man to man, they come out of the zone. Rotate to the man to man defensively. Ogalaja matched up on the cloud right now. They're doing some slapping. Delta Fawcett halftime report coming up right after we're done here. Price for three. He just can't buy one. Newton had it knocked away. Here come the Tar Heels. Carter had it knocked away. Langdon ahead the desperate. Well, the Dukies up a deuce at halftime. Can Mike K end that decline of losing seven in a row? 33-31 Duke, a seesaw game in the first half in the greatest rivalry in college basketball. That's the first half. Let's go to Chris Fowler. Chris? Mike, thanks. The heavy underdog Tar Heels, well, the standards of this rivalry anyway, hanging with it. But, Digger, they've had trouble with the lack of depth in second halves. Before. Well, I think the key in the second half, the trouble will come from the defensive side. And when you take a look at defense, Duke is sub. They play their bench. They play solid defense. Carolina has struggled. At the end of the games, their defense sort of, like, disappears because they don't have the depth. And Duke just uses about ten players. Carolina about, about six or seven. Coming up on our Delta Fawcett halftime report, 
in trouble at the bubble. Kansas ranked number one, but getting a huge battle from Texas Tech and trailing. We'll have highlights of that ballgame. Also, a wire job in the ACC. Gary Williams tossed out. ESPN presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Chrysler. Exploring the new frontiers of automotive technology. What's new in your world? And by the U.S. Army. Be a part of the toughest, smartest army in the world. Be all you can be. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Michelob Beer, official sponsor of the PGA Tour. Some days are made for Michelob. And by Fila, change the game. Duke by two at the half, 33-31, and the Blue Devils have nearly half their points coming from beyond the three-point line, Mr. Vitale. Well, Mike, we're going to take a look at how they get free for that three-point shot. We're going to watch one of the keys to their game is dribble penetration. We watch the ball. It's going to be kicked out to Caprizic. Now, right here, see this gap we talked about? He attacks the gap, and then now Langdon's going to drift to the line. He's going to kick it out to Langdon. There's the gap. Now watch Capel. He attacks it, kicks it out, and there's Mr. Langdon, who can really shoot the three. Antoine Jamison, where have you been? I mean, averaging 21 a game. Look at McLeod, right up on him, making him drive to the basket. Good rotation. Now watch when he catches the ball on a wing. McLeod brings it to the base. Now look at the rotation. Look at Langdon. Double ups. I'll tell you one thing, they got to get him some shots, Mike. He was one for two in the first half, averaging 21 a game, leading the conference. Number one scorer in the ACC, number 17 in the country, and he gets two shots in the first half. He's a super south, one of the best five south in America, along with Paul Pierce, Ron Mercer. I love Lewis Bullock down at Michigan. He... Shimon Williams brings it up against Wojciechowski. Okolaja starts the second half. He'll take a three and hit it. Owens double figures in the first half. A lot of balance on the court. Somebody's got to step up. Adamola Okolaja with seven, and North Carolina's lead is one. Jumper by Carowell. Very Okolaja with a rebound. Very difficult defensive matchups with Serge Swicker now with his size without Newton on the floor. Jamison touching the ball, but at the top of the circle. This is Wicker and over the much shorter McLeod. That's very smart. Bring it into him. Let them pay with that size differential. And he has great touch. Wicker has 10. North Carolina has matched its biggest lead at three. Remember at stake this year for North Carolina. 32 years in a row, Dean has been number one, two, or three in a conference. McLeod. Nice spin move, but then Wicker is there to knock it away. Capel got caught. Great bounce pass. The shot won't fall for Carowell, but Swicker picks up the foul. Good inside passing. Good interior passing. Now look at Swicker using that 7-3 side. This is McLeod. You can't check it. I love that little hook shot. I was George Mike years ago. Where has the hook shot gone, Mike? He's bringing him back. Guys don't utilize that at all. I would imagine that Shaquille O'Neal would be unstoppable with a nice hook. Two shots. Newton starting the second half on the bench just the way he opened the game. Yeah, he better get on the floor because they're going to need him out there with his size in his game. I don't believe they can win this game without Newton being coming a factor inside. He's in a little bit of a doghouse. Didn't respond the way Mike wanted to respond at practice. Gave him a little chase. Hey, he's not the first guy he's ever put on a practice. And I'll guarantee you he will not be the last. Carowell misses them both. Mike Krzyzewski's in charge, baby. He is the commander-in-chief here at Duke University. Four-time national coach of the year. Back-to-back -back national titles, 91 and 92. Three-pointer won't go, but Swicker is there to follow Carter's miss. That's why they need Newton, Mike. Uh, here he comes. They need Newton. They need the big fella to neutralize him. North Carolina with its biggest lead, 38-33. Newton at the scorer's table. Trajan Langdon working against Carter. This is Capel. McLeod, nice head fake to get three from 15. He's got that nice medium range jump shot. Rashawn McLeod has seven. Good deal by Wojciechowski. Nice anticipation. I set up Langdon for three. Those are the little things. Wojciechowski, you will not see that in the box score. But 
the little guy made that happen with his defensive presence and then the little kick out. And the moment he got the ball, Dick, he knew exactly where he was going to go and he knew where Langdon would be. Jamison blocked. Elijah with a follow. The feel of first half stats. North Carolina shooting over 50%, 80% from three point range. And their bench, for one of the few times this year, because Vince Carter started on the bench, comes up with eight points as opposed to three for Duke. Here's Wojo now. Look at the little kickback. He spots good peripheral vision, spots Langdon, and he'll just finish it off. I love his stroke. Unbelievably, the first assist tonight for Wojciechowski. It has not been a good night for point guards. Both Koda and Wojciechowski with more turnovers than with assists. And that's rare, especially the kind of year Wojo's had this year. Okalaja got the roll on the second one, 40-38. Tar Heels by two. They found Okalaja through Hendrick Rodel, who used to play here. There's a diagonal pass. Langdon wide open, put it in the books before he lets it go. For Trajan Langdon. He gets open because of the defense rotating to the basketball, but someone's got to be aware of Trajan Langdon. He leads the conference in shooting threes. Offensive foul called against North Carolina, Shavon Williams. And Dean Smith exploded off the bench. I'll tell you one thing, Mike. Woja House is an emotional leader. He really provides such a spark with his hustle, his scrappiness. Look at this little competitor. I mean, my all Rambo. He's going to make my all Rambo team. Look at him right here. Look at him taking it. And he looks at the official. He says, yes, I love it. Look at that emotion. Oh, you got to like people like that to play with their heart. Capable. Great, yeah, great move. Hello. Get it to you, baby. Hello. And for Capo, the lead is three. And the Cameron Indoor Stadium is rocking. This kind of play is what this series is about. Swicker after a nice setup. In and out. The tip, Okalaja got up and in. Okalaja really worked it hard. Adam Ola Okalaja with 11 points. That shot right there by Langdon. Didn't have the good look. McLeod with a follow. That's going to be a foul on Newton who really hacked Zwicker. That's one on the big guy. Well, I think he's playing a little aggressive because Mike used a few choice adjectives in questioning his toughness. And I think today he's coming out here saying, hey, i got to show coach. I am tough. I'm from Canada, and I'm a tough, tough guy on the inside. You know, he needs the club and rebound it and it's scoring. So let's give the kid a little credit. Seventh in the conference in rebounding. Oh, look, look. Tonight, he hasn't produced very much. Of course, in his defense, he hasn't played all that exactly. much. Exactly. He hasn't had a whole lot of PT, so his numbers are very misleading. Duke by one, 16-52 and counting from Cameron Indoor. That's the story right there. The denial of the basketball to Antoine Jameson. In all the games I've done over the last two years featuring North Carolina, I have never seen him struggle so much to get the basketball as he is tonight. Look at McLeod now. He's anticipating. Boy, you man, then the double up. That's respect. They respect him so much. Jameson scores. He has four points on the night. I love him. He's one of the great players in college basketball. Plays hard, great attitude, and the best offensive rebounder in college. Gary Williams had the best line about him. He said if he ever develops a consistent 15-foot jump shot, it's over. The party's over. McLeod that right. knocks that one out of bounds after Zwicker gets another block. Now, Zwicker doesn't get any of those spectacular jobs, but he's already blocked three shots in this ballgame. He's very effective. A lot of people thought he'd just be a project all airport player, look good at the airport, and not really be a factor, but he has become a factor at North Carolina. Give McLeod some credit here defensively against Okolaji. He's done a great job. Zwicker playing a little bottom ball with himself. Shaman Williams with a miss over the backboard and out of bounds to do. Mike, you got the cloud matching up on Jameson. Yes. He's done an outstanding job on him, keeping the ball away from him to where he wants to get the basketball. That's the real story each week on Inside Basketball. The final unbeaten is still in a bit of trouble at the bubble. Texas Tech outworking, out hustling, out boarding number one Kansas. Tony Batsy, Batman, has a bunch of points and also four blocks. Mike Dick. 44-43, North Carolina by one with 15.58 to go in the ballgame. 
We try to keep you updated on the North Carolina softballs whenever we do one of the Heels games. Usually Jamison leading the way. He's the leading scorer in the ACC, averaging 21-2, has only four tonight. Okalaja actually the leading scorer tonight with 11 points. He stepped up his offense. I think you're going to see a spurt out of Jamison. He's one of those spurt scorers. All of a sudden, he puts three, four cookies up. And he puts them in a book. Capel didn't want the three, but Chappelle will take it. Capel, who's always been a really good rebounding guard, picks that one off, and Wojo will reset. He's a guard you can invert. You can bring him inside as well as play him on a perimeter. Newton, a little shovel shot, won't work for him, fights for the rebound. Jamison comes out with it. I'll tell you, Newton's really working on the inside. The ball's not bouncing his way. No, he's not getting the breaks, but he's playing as hard as he can. Jamison, they got McLeod fronting him right now. He wants the lob. Now they're going to switch on him. Laterally, they switch. McLeod got a piece of it against Swicker, comes out to Coda. He saves it. Well, they had him. They missed Jamison that time. He's matched up with Newton. Now they'll switch again. They're switching, of course, any lateral move. Newton with the interception as the shot clock was inside 10. Good job by Newton running down to the post. The three by McLeod. They really go to that three-point line. They are really utilizing it this year. Krzyzewski sending Trajan Langdon back to the scorer's table. Vince Carter is there for North Carolina. And Jamison finally got away from McLeod for a jam. Just a matter of time. Really wanted the ball. Posted well. Showed some patience offensively. Not taking bad shots. A star of stars. No doubt about it. I'm Juan Jamison. Two of the top scoring teams in the ACC. And rather a low scoring affair here. McLeod in low against Jameson. Nice pass to Capel for three. That was great execution. Look, he's up on a glass again, Mr. Jameson. Only Tim Duncan has more rebounds in the ACC. Nice pass. McLeod was not looking for the ball, and Jameson had it in mid-stride. I talked a minute ago how you'll see a spurt out of him. You're not going to keep him under wraps. He's just too explosive. Coach K knows that. 48-43, good anticipation by Oak Elijahs. He knocks it away. Antoine Jameson shows the star quality player he is by making a big play. Look at him post it now. They're trying to front him. They're trying to beat him to the ball. Drop step, excellent drop step. He's so quick once he catches the ball. See that big drop step? He makes that really good spin and pin move. Dean Smith going a little deeper into his bench with a five-point lead. He's got Ryan Sullivan, the sophomore from New Jersey, on for the first time. That's really a problem when he has to go deep into his bench. He's like seven strong. Langdon, nice jump step, and he will draw the foul. He's trying to steal minutes right now out of Sullivan. Just doesn't want to get hurt, trying to rest some people. Back to our Jai is a guy that's got to give a little bit more productivity. He's got talent. Teams third. Gonna be a Mac Tart shy, his first. Two shots. Jamison getting a little bit of a breather. Great attitude, just like a Tim Duncan today. He gets 10 points, five rebounds against Wofford, breaks his 26 game streak of double doubles. But you know what? Noah Duncan, he can care less. No, he won't. All, all he cares about is winning, and it's the same with Antoine. Won't matter to him at all. He'll be ready for a double double Saturday. Gary better have his team ready with Maryland. 16 points for Trajan Langdon. Here's full court pressure. Coda, nice job to get it up to Carter. Cross court to Sullivan, knocked out of bounds by Price. This is where North Carolina can get hurt. Go into the bench, but they have to rest some people. Swicker comes back in. Sullivan will go out. That's Pat Sullivan's brother. Yes. Now working in their department, handling the video work. Great young guy. Had so many tough breaks as a collegiate physically. 48-45, heels by three, trying to win their eighth straight game in the story rival. On a head swicker, he had a post move inside, an inside position. Coda, nice penetration, shot won't go for it. Battle underneath, Jai comes out with it, and he's fouled. Good offensive rebound by Maktar. Started at Wake Forest, was a roommate of Tim Duncan when he arrived on a campus out of Oak Hill Academy. You know, I'm thinking, Mike Harris, I look at some banners. 91, 92. See, there's the championship ring. He has the championship ring on. 91 and 92, they go back to back. North Carolina, 93. Just think about Tobacco Road. And think about what would possibly be there if Rasheed Wallace, Jerry Stackhouse, and Jeff McGinnis stayed in school. There's a look at those banners. It's an awesome thought, isn't it? Wow. That 
was the fourth foul on Steve Wojciechowski. He will have to go to the bench with 13.08 to go in the game as Maktar Jai hits a free throw. There's Wojo. He's the catalyst for this offense. Maktar Jai has been a guy who has frankly been a disappointment so far for North Carolina. He really hasn't produced many points, many rebounds, and he seems to be a little bit more intense tonight than I've seen him earlier. I tell you, he's worked really hard. He's worked one-on-one -on -one with Coach Smith, who's really working with him offensively. He's really had a tough time getting the kind of minutes in a positive way. But I'm telling you, he's a great kid, Mike. He's a great kid. 50-45. Price, Loda Newton against nice Wicker. Langdon for three. Wide open. He buries every one of them. 19 for Trajan Langdon. Someone's got to send them a scouting report. I know team has them alerted to it. He can flat out shoot the ball. He's got too many wide open looks. Swicker from 12 feet. Out of bounds, out to the Tar Heels. The bench scoring, really courtesy of, uh, of Vince Carter. But they'll take points off the bench any way they can get them, the way it's gone this year. Well, they have seven players. They basically rotate. Dean Smith, the teacher, just loves it. Work on the inside of that gym every day of practice. Swicker had it inside, blocked by Newton, and I don't know if Newton got him on the follow or got him on the shot. We'll see in a moment. Hall of Famer, 26 consecutive years, winning 20 or more games, 32 years, one, two, three in a conference, national title at 82 and at 93. Do you know what his average record is? Average. 24 and 7. Wow. That's his average record for 36 years. That is just unbelievable. That's awesome, baby, with a capital A, Mike. Look at a man. Swicker, who's worked hard to become a better free throw shooter, now has 13 points to lead back for three. Nice touch by Swicker on that foul line. Played for Stu Vetter in high school, Harker Prep. Now Stu Vetter over at St. John's Prospect Hall when Nate James came from. Reach in steal by Coda. He's Great got defense. He's got Okolaja. Three on one and Adamola jams it down. 54 48. Okolaja with 13. Nice. And Wojciechowski saying, man, I wish I didn't have the four. I could be out there. Because they're playing without a true point guard. It's one area they do not have a backup point guard that's a legitimate point guard. There's another example of breakdown without Wojo. And you feel badly for Capel because he is not a point guard. He's worked hard to better his ball handling skills, but it's a tough assignment for him to do that. That's a big adjustment. When you're a scorer and it asks you to go over to the other role, big pass, look at Wojo. You talk about a fighter and a scrapper. Look at the intensity. Cota lobs it low again, picked off by Newton, a hit for Price. And he's fouled by Cota. That will be two on Ed Cota. Ricky Price is a player that has to find his rhythm and get back into this lineup as a productive player. Dick, he's so explosive. He could mean so much to this club. He averaged 14 a game last year. You can talk with basketball. Carolina in transition. As we're going to see it come off the steal. There's the steal. Here comes Eddie Cota. He says, where are you, Adamola? He kicks it down to Mola, Jam City. Number one, Kansas, 20 and 0, continues to have trouble trying to contain Texas Tech's Tony Batte inside. He is winning the battle of the best big men of the Big 12 over Ray LaFrance. The chin up right there. Then Bonowitz. Watch this pretty body control as Batte lays it in. The Texas Tech lead is 11. That's Cameron. Boy, Chris, you can bet they've got an eye on that one in Winston-Salem. They would be the new number one. Well, the plot really thickens. I got a question as you're watching Coach K really working here in a timeout. I mean, you can see that intensity. Hey, what happens if Maryland beats Wake Forest? Kansas gets beat today. Who's number one next week? Kentucky can get in that mix. Duke down by six. Wojciechowski, their point guard on the bench with four personal fouls. Price nearly picked off. Langdon leans into a three. Price offensive rebound. Big bucket in the foul. Where have you been, Ricky Price? Where have you been? Wojo says, that's my guy from California, baby. First two 
points for Price. And he really Second. wanted it, Mike. Watch how he attacks yeah, the glass here. Team. This is the star ability we're talking about. He just snatches that in the air. He was Mr. California as a high school star. Shooting for the Ricky Price has got to step it up. They need his performance. All of his numbers off from a year ago. He is down to 63.5% from the free throw line, shooting only 39% from the floor. Missed that one. McLeod trying to keep it alive. McLeod got the ball along with Jamison. The possession arrow will give it back to the Blue Devils. Hustling, strong work by McLeod inside. You know, Ricky Price, Mike, averaged 14 a game last year. He was really so tough. Shot the three well, 38%. The shot I remember was the three-point game winner at Maryland. A huge shot that he hit. Now he's going to score inside with Newton. Newton trapped in the lane, got it back outside. The lane and carries another one. That play has been very effective. The double up on Newton has created open opportunities on the perimeter. So it's inside, outside for the open jump shot. Six threes for Trajan Langdon, 22 points. lethal from outside. There he is again. Just nicked the front of the rim on that. Capel had it taken away by Oak Elijah. Jump ball situation. Now the arrow will go to Carolina. And it's getting more physical with 10.38 to go. Six out of 11. Already led the ACC coming in. It was seventh in the country. Coming off that injury. Sat out all of last year. Surgery on that knee. There's nothing like shooting the jump shot, Mike. If you can knock that down, you're going to get playing time. Here's Coda as they try to switch. This is going to be an offensive foul. They get it on Jameson, setting an illegal screen. He was moving, did not hold. That will be his third personal foul, and that will put North Carolina in oh, the yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See how he took the extra step? He didn't hold his ground. You've got to be stationary in setting that screen. 17 foul against the Tar Heels, so Duke will Thank shoot one-on-one. On one. There are front screens and back screens. Eight team turnovers against North Carolina. Really what you would expect being forced by a quicker Duke defense. More scoring on the interior by North Carolina, and that's expected too because of the size. They're looking for Jamison right now, posted inside. I'll tell you, he holds position well for a kid that doesn't look physically that strong. They have him. He worked on his strength in the offseason. There is an offensive foul on Jamison. And that, Newton did a great job. And that's his fourth foul, by That sure is big. Is. That is big. Got 10 minutes left. He's got to come out of the game. And Okalaja trying to calm him down. He's really upset about the call. He's wide open. Now he wants to take the ball to the goal. Oh, there's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Newton steps. Has great position. Both feet are planted, and he made contact. He's playing with four. I'd attack him right now. I'd go right at Jameson. Instead, they go at Swicker, and Cable just threw that one up off balance. That was a prayer. Yeah, they should have went to the cloud. He's being played by Jameson. Oh, collides with almost a set shot for three, and he missed it. This will be on Swicker. Two on the 7 3 senior. Right now, you're looking at Jameson. It looks a little tired. They're going to take him out for a minute. Coming up tomorrow night, Rivalry Week continues. You'll get to see UMass against GW at the Smith Center, 7.30 Eastern start. That will be followed by number eight, Cincinnati, against number nine, Louisville. That one starts at 9.30. I can't wait to get down here to Louisville for that matchup. Hey, I got to be the envy of hoop fanatics. I mean, think about this. Don't tell Steve Bornstein off for us, but 
I'm here tonight. I go to Louisville, Cincinnati. I go to Maryland Wake on Saturday. Back here at Duke on Sunday. Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky Tuesday. And then I'm with you down at Wake and Duke. I mean, unbelievable. Six and eight days, great games. I'll do it for nothing, Mike. Well, he already knows that, Dick, and the letter's coming. <laughs> Don't tell him. I know he's not watching tonight, so I can say that. First free throw good by Langdon, but there was a lane violation on the second one, so we're tied at 54. Oh, we're going to have a great finish. Remember what's at stake. Not only a conference play, a lot of pride. Duke's lost seven in a row at the Heels. Coda picked up his dribble, had it knocked away. Here's the steal. Got to give it up to Price. Capel takes it in and scores. He had Price wide open, but he made the good move, and he got the conversion. Capel with 13, and Duke has the lead back. Timeout, North Carolina, after an 8 nothing Blue Devil run. Came out of that timeout where Mike really got in their faces. Look at this place rocking. Oh! I roll the hugs in the timeout. There's all the 1,400 SATs, baby. Gonna watch the defensive pressure. Picked up his dribble. Price popped it out. Look at Price. He's gonna head of the ball. But Cable says, no, I'm gonna take it right to the basket. Great move by Cable. Could have went to the bounce pass to Price. Look at Wojo. Look at this guy working the sideline. He's gonna be a coach. There's no doubt about it. The man of the most leader last year, Chris Collins. Hey, congratulations to Doug. He's gonna coach the All-Star team. Absolutely. Headed by a Duke by the name of Grant Hill, who's just getting better and better and better. 24 total turnovers in the first half, but Duke has done much better in the second as the Tar Heels now have 20 for the game. They had five in the first, like, few minutes. Coda trying to get some penetration. Nice pass. Swicker. Swicker's been the offense tonight. He missed that one. It's tipped in by Carter, and he's fouled. Vincent Carter with the great legs. We're seeing a lot of bumps, a lot of bruises. A lot of guys must have a lot of bruises after these games. The way they bump each other. Vince Carter was in a heated battle in the recruiting wars. Was rated top five in the United States from out of Daytona Beach, Florida. There he is with the tip. Now with his choices to North Carolina. And a Florida State. Guy is a real Skywalker. 56 all. Remarkable that North Carolina has not gotten any point production out of Shimon Williams or Antoine Jameson. And they're tied. Capel using the glass with a miss. That's reminiscent of the win Indiana had over Michigan. They got zero out of Patterson in this play and two out of Collier, and yet they beat the Wolverines. Sometimes you just can't figure it out. Coda is fouled on the way in. Good drive there by Coda to create the foul opportunity. You know, I was telling people today, Mike, if you look at Duke's record at 15 and 5, as Wojo's coming in with four fouls, they have three losses that were right there for wins. They gave away that Clemson game. It was right there to be won. They had that game won. They had Michigan down here big, and they let that escape here at home, and they lost a tough one to Maryland. They could be sitting at 18 and 2. This is the best 15 and five team you're ever going to see. The numbers on Coda for the night as Mike Krzyzewski shuttles his lineup in and out. I'll tell you one thing Newton did really well. He hustled, he played hard, and when he caught the ball on the inside, he reversed it and kicked it back out. And if you look at his stats, he doesn't have a lot of assists as a big man. Coda, who leaves the ACC in assists, 6.3 a game, hits the first free throw. Both teams now in the bonus. And it's a one-point North Carolina lead. This guy's relaxed. I'll tell you, talk about class. You talk about a teacher. You talk about a winner. Pete Smith, when you can survive the years he has survived, Number year four, after year, put clubs out there, and have done it the right way. You never hear about NCAA investigations. Nothing. Let me uh, test you on a little uh -oh. trivia question uh -oh. I gave you last year. Uh -oh. I, I gave you the, the average season, 24 and 7 for Dean Smith. Right. I tried the, this one on you last year and fooled you. I'll try it again. Uh -oh. Worst record in the last 25 years. His worst record? Yes. Stumped you again. Wow. 21 and 13. 21 and 13. That's the worst record he's had in 25 years. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. <laughs> Two point lead for Carolina, eight and a half minutes to go. You're like Brad Nestler now. Brad, my buddy, giving me all that trivia. Oh, oh, nice, nice, nice pass to Wallace, but he hesitated, didn't get the shot off quickly. Oh, Kalijah runs it down. 
Execution now becomes big. We get the single digit numbers here in the second half in terms of time. There's Coder. Trying to get him into their passing game. It's a motion. Coda against Wojciechowski. Nice look. Boy, a bullet pass, and Okalaja wasn't ready for it. Langdon back the other way. Wojciechowski pump fake. Cape forced the shot, but got the roll. I tell you, Jeff Cape's confidence is going up, up, and up with each possession. And earlier this year, it was Struggle City out of Cape. Capel has 15. We're tied at 58. And if they can get Ricky Place to come back like Capel has, they're going to be a factor down the second half of the season. Well, Jahowski has to be careful with those four fouls. Wallace against Okalijah. Shot clock at 11. He likes to penetrate. Drops it off. Shaman Williams with a runner. Offensive rebound to Maktar Jai. He's got it again. Good effort by Maktar. Shaman Williams for three. Can't give him three opportunities, Mike. They'll make you pay. And that was created by Maktar with a good effort. As you look at Antoine Jameson. Shaman Williams only had three points the entire first half. Now he buries another three, and the lead is three. Langdon to tie. But there's a whistle and a foul. At 26 last year. I mentioned Michigan earlier. I think Steve Fisher's club's going to be a major factor in the postseason. A very dangerous team, and I think you're going to see them surge. In fact, I heard Chris Fala talking about that today on radio with the fabulous sports page. Shimon Williams picks up his second personal foul. Excuse me, change it to three. See, I really stalk Fala. I watch everything he does. I watch him today. <laughs> I listen to all his comments. He said, Tulane. He said, I've been telling people about Tulane. Nobody had them. Hey, Chris, go get my magazine, will you? I had him number 15 in America preseason. Well, all we have, all we have to see the studio here is a little black and white mon monitor, but it looks like he's got one of those killer tans. <laughs> McLeod, seven points, a real strong game for him. Well, he's done a good job defensively. That's what they asked him. Had a big game offensively against Maryland, 22 and 11. Charging foul by Will Jahowski when they had a chance to tie the game. Langdon gets a breather. I'll tell you, Mike, you talk about the surprise teams in America. Maryland's got to be there with Xavier and certainly Colorado as the three major surprises. No surprise here. It's a one-point game between Duke and North Carolina. So much riding between these teams, these schools, and these players. Back to Lubbock and never count out Kansas. All night long, Texas Tech have been able to prevent the big Kansas run until Ryan Robertson, the steal and the lay-in. Then Ray Flafrentz muscles inside the putback of the Thomas Miss, a 16-3 run. And Kansas has gained the lead in Lubbock. It's only two, 7.20 to play. Wow, what a comeback. You know, they were down 18 against Cincinnati. They got a lot of character in the heart, Mike. They really do. Pretty classy outfit. Coached by a classy guy, Roy Williams, a disciple of Dean Smith. Done a brilliant job out there. 61-60, Carolina by one. Six and a half minutes to go in the game. McLeod strips Zwicker. Wojo has the favor returned by Shimon Williams. Your teammates have to help you on that one. Tell you there's a man behind you. Yeah, communication. Jameson! Oh! He hesitated. He made the drop step. He thought he was home free, but he didn't take it up with a typical Jameson jam. See, Newton's getting touches inside, and he's kicking it back outside as soon as he feels the pressure. Price got by Shimon Williams. A lot of contact inside. No whistle. Newton puts it up in a foul. I tell you, Newton has really played hard in the minutes he's gotten here tonight. There's the rotation from the help side, and there's the shot block. Jamison didn't anticipate Newton rotating over. He says, where's the foul? I'm a star. I'm to get the foul here. Price was fortunate on the other end because he went down the lane out of control and lost the ball. The storyline from Durham, North Carolina, it's been a big night for Zwicker and North Carolina inside. 
Duke has forced 22 turnovers and have done a lot of their damage outside. Trajan Langdon with 23 points. The game has been tied nine times, and the lead has changed in six. Well, Mike, we talked about two factors in our opening, basically. We said the three-point shot has to be big for Duke, and Langdon would have to perform, and he's done such. And we said Swicker has to be big inside because the lack of size for Duke, and he has done such. Newton has not scored. He is Duke's leading scorer at 14.1 points a game. He's working on a goose egg right now. But he's done a good job defensively when he's been on a he floor. Has. He's and a top 10 ACC free throw shooter, and he missed two. Shimon Williams got caught up in the air and threw it away. Once you leave your feet, unless you've already got a plan, you could be in trouble. You better have a positive plan. Langdon leans into one. He's got a positive plan, Mike. His plan is to fill up that little hole, baby, and he fills it up. Trajan Langdon has equaled his career high of 25 points to give the Blue Devils the lead. And these Dukies want to end this 7-0 slide they've been on against Carolina. Carolina wants Franklin Street to jump. They want a jubilation city there tonight. They can get this W. Those eight miles will be a nice short ride home. Coda against Wojciechowski. Shimon Williams got three at the baseline and drained it. See, he's really a better player when he plays the off guard. But he could think shot as opposed to pass. Langdon drew a lot of attention that time. McLeod will try a three and make it. Right open because of the four fouls on Jamison. He's not coming at him aggressively. Duke by two. Oh, this is another beauty here, baby. Another beauty. Was McLeod attacking Jamison on the outside. Baseline shot again. Shimon Williams hits the bucket and draws the foul. Two tough shots in a row. And he draws all the photographers on him, and he's not kicking on that sideline either. He's not kicking. Coda gets a word with Dean Smith, tied at 65. Capel will come back in for Duke and Price will go out. There's Shimon now working on that baseline. There's the little jumper. Goes down. Dean Smith, I tell you, look at him. You think he's in this game? You think he's satisfied with the W's he's had in his career, the Hall of Fame honors, and the national Number titles? 15. This guy's Carter, next is moment is the moment he's concerned about. What are we doing now? There's a great second lieutenant, Bill Guthridge, behind him. Been there 30 years. Unbelievable. Loyalty. Played at Kansas State when he went to the Final Four. He was on a national championship team at Kansas. North Carolina up by a point, approaching the four-minute mark. Loaded to it inside, and some good things will happen. He's a make -up. He's looking for the open man. Can't find one. When they lock up, they don't double up at him. Here's Capel. Shot clock at seven. Does he go at Jameson? See how he let him go right by him? Boy, Newton did a great job. Newton just screened off Swicker. Yeah, he screened off Swicker, and he also got by Jameson, who just played batter door defense because of the four foul. What a great game. Anytime you put these two uniforms on, it's a special moment. Coda got by Wojciechowski. He's working with those four fouls. Oh, Elijah for three. Oh, that was blocked. What a red there.
precedent to this place. One of the special places in college hoops. I have done a Duke North Carolina game, I think, every year since 1978. You can't get any better. As it gets finer, Carolina. Shimon Williams shot clock down to six. He tries a three. Tell you a lot of intensity and emotion. See, right now, I'd go right at Jameson. I would still go at Jameson because he's afraid to get that fifth foul. Right here. McLeod with a long three. Are you kidding? That's not the shot you want. And ahead to Jameson. Got by McLeod. Gets the Jameson. bucket. What an IQ. Great basketball IQ for Antoine Jameson. He sees him release the jump shot. He sees him stand. He releases in transition, and there's no defensive balance. Tell you what, I was going to say that shot may have been a little outside McLeod's range. That may have been outside anybody's range. 2.23 to go in the game. Duke on top of North Carolina, 69-68. And there's the kick out to Antoine Jamison, who released. Now he takes it up. Conversion, baby. Once down, 16. Number one, Kansas has outscored Texas Tech 45-24 in the second half. The lead is seven. We'll keep you posted one more time before Sports Center, right after Duke, North Carolina. Back to Mike and Dick and Durham for the great finish, guys. Wow, what an unbelievable comeback! But they've done that all year, showing so much character, playing without Scott Pollard. A big loss, and they're plus seven. Look at this rivalry, Mike. Look at the numbers here. Look at that. Seven in a row they've lost to North Carolina. Right now, they have a one-point lead in two minutes and 23 seconds to go to break that streak. Duke came in tonight, ranked 12th in the nation, North Carolina 19th. That's amazing. They got three teams in the conference rated in the top seven, and they're not even there, one of the, one of the three. Wojciechowski back in with those four personals. They go to a zone, North Carolina, in a timeout. Protecting Antoine Jameson by zoning up. Good adjustment by Dean Smith. Now they just got to match up. They got to find the shooters. Capel penetrating. Great pass to Newton. I'll tell you, what a pass. Has Jeff Capel played a solid game tonight, Mike? He has really executed. He's shown a lot of emotion. And there's the two leaders, the two seniors, stepping up. And the first two points of the night for Newton, the Blue Devils' leading scorer. Mike, I'll tell you one thing, as you watch the season progress, unwind now, Duke is going to their experienced players a lot more than they are to their young kids who they played earlier. The minutes have been reduced. They're going to their capels and to their people like Newton. Newton with his first two, 69% free throw shooter. He is 0 for 2 tonight at the line. Looks like he took a left hook right there from Evander Holyfield. I think it was Obina Akizi, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Newton with a three-point play the old-fashioned way, and the lead is four. Looking at two possessions now. This is a big possession for North Carolina. The building is bouncing. Swicker 20 feet from the basket. Shaman Williams. Jameson's got to come to the ball. they got to get Jameson the basketball. He's got to come to the ball. Langdon on Coda. Shot clock is down to 12. Got to go to your number one option. And Coda hits a 15-foot shot. That's a tough shot. Coda with 10. What a clutch shot. And I'm really surprised that he'd be the guy because you would think of him as the fourth or fifth option. He is starting to show some more offensive will. They got to find Langdon in the zone. They got to try to overload the zone and get Langdon that good shot against it. See, if he drifts on that sideline, he could be open. 108 to go in the ballgame. Capel for three. Offensive rebound blocked by Swicker. Jump ball, and it will go back to Duke. See, there's another example why that rule's got to go. He makes a great defensive play, Serge Swicker, and yet he's penalized by alternate possession. We've been saying that for years, uh, and it never is going to change, is it? I don't understand the reasoning for it. It's penalizing good defensive plays. I mean, it's absurd and ludicrous. 101 to go in the game. Duke with the basketball and a two-point lead. Coda got by Wojciechowski. He's working with those four fouls. Oh, Kalijah for three. That was blocked. Big moment.
moment in this game as Duke has taken a 72 70 lead over North Carolina in a seesaw battle with 101 left. I'll tell you what a big play by Ed Cotero. You talk about a kid having guts, a little shake and bake like he's done on a New York Street playground, a little 101 jump shot at the top. Nothing but net, baby. MBN, nothing but nylon. Fresh 35 on the shot clock. There are the timeout situations for both clubs and the team fouls. 101 on the game clock, 35 on the shot clock. Managing that clock now, clock management, really important. Man to man defense now by North Carolina. Hey, Duke can make free throws, Mike. They got some really dominant free throw shooters, especially Langdon. tonight the lead is six if he makes this it is a three possession game I know North Carolina's had a lot of miracle finishes you never can say they're over but down with three possessions now at 17 ticks I think you've got an unbelievable scoop if they could ever pull this out it's over get the bus driver ready to go to Chapel Hill Whoa, Joe who leads the ACC in steals makes another one the 25th turnover against North Point guard always gave his best. Look at Coach Dan. Look at the smile. He knows it's over. He knows he's got the W. He says, Well, Joe, we'll go out and we'll celebrate with some kibasi tonight, baby. If you can only imagine how intense the rivalry is between these teams and how much it means to Duke tonight to break a seven game losing. Well, all you had to do was be here today and watch the shoot around and see how Mike was in command expressing all the little things they wanted to accomplish. They'll be back. North Carolina will be back. You haven't heard the end of this club yet this year. Wojciechowski misses the second one, but only 12 seconds to go in the game. Matt Tarjai will take a three and make it. 78-73, the Tar Heels not even going to work for a timeout. Smart play, good catch. seconds left on the clock they get the crowd and the photographers and everybody else back on the bench now they run it off and Duke has beaten Carolina 80 to 73 and breaks that seven game streak and you would think they won the national title the way they up beyond the floor look at this play that's reminiscent of the year that North Carolina beat Duke we did the game and Duke was number one in America with Christian Langner and they erupted and celebrated Dick, in this series, this is the national title. Oh, I'll tell you, it's a special place. Two great institutions, a great private school, a great state university, academically super places, great players, great coaches, and a great environment. I absolutely am thrilled to be here. 
Once again, our final score, Duke 80, North Carolina 73. Along with Dick Vitale, this is Mike Patrick. Stay tuned for SportsCenter up next. You're watching ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. But first, let's check back into the studio with Chris Fowler. Chris. Guys, thank you. Job well done. It is tough to match this rivalry for uh, passion and emotion every year. They better cancel morning classes at Duke tomorrow. There's going to be partying into the wee hour. So one streak ends. Another streak apparently will continue as number one Kansas now leads by seven down in Lubbock after trailing by 16 points in the first half. Ford Center up next with scores and highlights. Cincy Louisville continues rivalry week. Game two tomorrow night. See you then. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Ford Taurus, a look you've never seen from a name you know well.